Not sure how many of our listeners today are familiar with Charles Dickens' classic book, A Christmas Carol. I read it every year, round about November, start of December. It's a wonderful book, and I believe as well there are many lessons for life and also many spiritual lessons in Dickens' book. Some of you will know well the story of Ebenezer Scrooge and the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, the ghost of Christmas future, uh, showing him through his life's journey where he went wrong, decisions he made, choices he made, and a man who became very miserly, very covetous, very money oriented and also very miserable and lost out on so many blessings that he could have enjoyed in life. And sometimes believers, Christians are oftentimes the same. And if we could just look back and think about where we are and maybe think about where we're going in this world that we're living in, it would put a new complexion on where we stand before God. And there's a scene in Christmas Carol whenever he is taken back and he sees himself with a young woman that he was once in love with. And I'm just going to read uh, some of this portion because there's a spiritual lesson that I want to bring out from it. It says he was not alone, but sat by the side of a fair young girl in a mourning dress, in whose eyes were tears, which sparkled in the light that shone out of the ghost of Christmas past. It matters little, she said softly, to you very little. Now here's the words that I want you to think about. Another idol has displaced me. And if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, I have no just cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you, he rejoined. A golden one. This is the even-handed dealing of the world, he said. There is nothing in which it is so hard as poverty. And there is nothing it professes to condemn with such severity as the pursuit of wealth. You fear the world too much, she answered gently. All your other hopes have merged into the hope of being beyond the chance of its sordid reproach. I have seen your noble aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you, have I not? And therewith their relationship broke up and she went off and she married somebody else. But you can see the heartache in this young woman, her name's Belle, and she says to Scrooge, another idol has displaced me a golden one. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you, have I not. And I'm sure you maybe wonder where I'm going with this. But I've been reading recently through the book of Jeremiah. And so often the Lord expresses his grievance towards the children of Israel because of their idolatry. And I believe that in this day and generation that we're living in, especially the church in the West, idolatry in the church and in the hearts and the lives of Christian people has displaced the Lord Jesus Christ from the hearts and from the throne of the hearts of his people. Another idol has displaced me, a golden one. I've seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one, until this great master of gain completely engrosses the hearts and lives of God's people. And sometimes whenever we look back through the lens of history, and maybe we think where we were whenever we were young, whenever we first trusted the Lord, and we were in love with Jesus Christ. But maybe an idol has displaced the Savior from the throne of your heart. It might be a golden one. It might be the pursuit of wealth, the pursuit of pleasure. But I wonder today, has something taken the throne of your heart and taken your affections? And you look back to a time in your life whenever the Lord saved you and cleansed you and forgave you, and your heart was filled with thankfulness and gratitude and you loved him. But another idol has displaced him. It mightn't be an idol that you bow down to like the Hindus or the Buddhists or some uh, far off Eastern religion, but something that captivates your heart, draws your attention, takes your time. It might be your mobile phone, it might be a pleasure, it might be a hobby, it might be a business, but it is sapping the spiritual life out of you. 
And like the church at Ephesus that we read about in Ephesians chapter, or sorry, Re Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 4, where the Lord Jesus Christ says to his church, the church at Ephesus, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Is there somebody today and you've left your first love? Another idol has displaced Jesus Christ in your heart. And as his bride, you're wandering and you're drifting and you're not in the place with God where you once were. Idolatry. And the result is that you're miserable. Scrooge began to live a miserable, miserly life. Don't let that happen in your life. Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? Where is the soul refreshing view of Jesus and his word? The dearest idol I have known, whatever that idol be, help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only thee. May the Lord bless these thoughts to our hearts today and may the Lord Jesus Christ be enthroned in our hearts. Take my life, it is thine own. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. May God bless you. Thank you for listening.